and then we would just talk wrestling. Cause I'm I I've got a lot to talk about wrestling. Uh, I fucking I tell you this. There's a generation of wrestling that I apparently missed. Now you were a wrestling fan at some point. I was a wrestling. No, fan. I think we both checked out at the same time. I think I checked out before you. The death because, of the WCW is when I quit. Well, but you were you were when like Hollywood Hulk Hogan and Bill Goldberg. Well, before right? that, I, from the eighties up till WCW like you died. Said, you knew NWO, right? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know NWO. I was you uh, checked out when WCW came about. So I knew like the. Hulk Hogan, Jake the Snake, Brett the Hitman Hart, Roddy Roddy Piper, that generation, like late 80s, early yeah, 90s. Yeah, before WCW. And then with WCW, I knew Beach Sting, and I knew when he, when he, Vader. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> when he went to, like... The Steiner the, Brothers. The Scorpion face paint. Yeah, yeah, that's who I knew. Yeah. Scor- Beach Sting, Vader, Steiner Brothers, Arn Anderson, yeah. Ric Flair, early Ric Flair... They all those guys moved to the WCW. Yeah, no, they were. Uh, that was WCW even early on. Like Beach Sting was early D- WCW. Oh, was it? I thought that was WWE. So or no, whatever. no, it was WCW, and all those guys were early WCW. But before, like, I was a Steiner Brothers fan when they would wear the wrestling outfit, and when Scott Steiner looked yeah. like just a shitty old wrestler guy with black. I didn't see him with the blonde hair and the, and the crazy steroid muscles. I never saw that Scott Steiner. Yeah. Oh no, he had like a perm actually. His brother Mad he had a Dog. Mullet. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the yeah. perm mullet. Yeah, and the brother had the ear protection. So I was wanting to introduce my daughter to wrestling, so we got on YouTube, and I was like, let's watch... Uh, Old wrestling, yeah. Let's watch Hulk versus and- Andre the Giant, Madison Square Garden, 1987. Right. Best match ever, he picks up Andre, body slams him. Yeah, Still well, unreal. What, whatever. Like, I was literally standing ovation. Now, those matches are just clotheslines, drop kicks, elbow drops. You know, that's what it is. No, Rey Mysterio made wrestling for me. The guy that would jump off the, like the rafters and fly around and do thirty flips. Well, so like when when the Mexican invasion happened, the luchadores. Yep, that I love that stuff. That's what got me into it. Well, what I didn't it a, know it was a spectacle at that point. So apparently, between like nineteen ninety four, which is probably when I checked out, to you checked out probably ninety eight, ninety nine. I would so, guess. yeah, something like that. All right, so in that age range. Because we've been watching on CMT a lot, my daughter loves a show called Broken Skull Challenge. You saw it tonight, a little bit of it. It's yeah. a Stone Cold Steve Austin obstacle ca- course challenge. Did you not like it? There's no show. It's a fucking great show. I mean, I guess it's okay in this. Like, if I, I like it in the same way I like World Strongest Men competitions. There, there's like no show there. It's just watching giant dudes do crazy things. It is. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's it is watching. Yeah, it's it's like a sports competition. Yeah, because there's no there's no story. There's no there's nothing to it other than, well, okay, you're out, you're in, you do this. Oh, you did that. Okay, you're up, you're out. And it's like a it's yeah. like a reality show sports competition. Yeah, but there's no reality show to it. Yeah, well, I mean, minus like the they do like the stupid trash talk and shit, yeah. and you know, Stone Cold. My favorite part. I'm gonna do this one day. I am gonna do this for the podcast one day. I'm gonna take a whole episode and I'm just gonna cut out the times he says badass. And I'm going to put together and see how long that lasts. I'm thinking it's going to be two minutes. Because it seems like every other word Steve Austin says is, that's badass. That's a badass move right there. Badass. We're the badasses on the most Ass badass bad. field. Um, so anyway, so we've been watching that show. Right. And because we've been watching it, I said, let me show a wrestler. Let me show my daughter a wrestler she knows so she can relate to it. Showed him some Stone so we, Cold. I looked up Stone Cold. I've never seen a Stone Cold match ever. Oh no! So this was when Raw had come up first. Like it's yeah. still WWF, I think, but it was yeah. Raw Monday Night Raw. So I click on the match. It's Stone Cold versus the Undertaker. I'm very excited. I knew the Undertaker because he's, he's apparently old as fucking dirt. Yeah, he's like 50, still wrestling. It's amazing because he was in my generation, your generation, and today. He, he was, was in my dad's generation. He was in. A, <laughs> he was in everyone's wrestling generation. He was wrestling Fred Blassie I, in the I'm fucking. Pretty 70s. sure he invented wrestling. Uh, so. He Clint is the, undead. He's he undead. Can't, he can't die. That's a fair point. If Paul Bearer's fucking dead. Undertaker, still alive. I don't even know who walks out with the Undertaker anymore. Paul Bearer's dead. No, he just rises. So I click the Stone Cold match. And uh, it's goes to Undertaker's in the ring. Looks like the beginning of the Andre Giant Hulk Hogan match. But then now, what, see, you got duped by the soap opera. Well, that's okay. So there's a whole layer of shit that I didn't know about. So then they show the beginning of the match. But then Stone Cold doesn't come out. Then they flash to a camera, which is backstage, all right? Yeah. And backstage, there's a guy that looks dead on the floor, which is Kane. Yeah. And there is Stone Cold and Triple H. 
stomping on Mark and Stone. And they're too. fucking, they're stomping on his head. And Triple H gets a sledgehammer and begins to sledgehammer the fucker. My daughter is fucking traumatized. She's like, why is they killing this man? Okay, and she's yeah, seen The Walking well, Dead. She knows it is a killing. Yeah, a sledgehammer to anybody is death. He is a sledgehammer in a dude, okay? And then they fucking pick him up and uh, and fucking just start ramming him like into a concrete wall in the locker room. Well, The Undertaker, I don't know how he knows what's happening back there. Because it's on the big screen okay. in the auditorium. He's so watching he, it. So he starts running into the locker room. Then Stone Cold and The Undertaker punch fight each other. From the locker room to the ring. And then, just trading punches. Yeah. Get in the ring, and then fucking uh, Triple H comes in the ring with the sledgehammer, knocks the Undertaker out. Well, Kane has arisen from the dead like a goddamn zombie, and he's now stumbling into the ring, right? He stumbles. Stone Cold jumps off, like kicks him in the fucking head. Kane, by the way, has a cast in his arm. He has a cast on his arm. So then they take Undertaker's dead. Might as well be in the ring because he got sledgehammered in the head. And now they take Kane, who's also been sledgehammered in the head, who's wandering around like a zombie. And they put his cast arm up on the steel steps, and then they begin to just jump off the top rope onto the arm with the, the cast arm onto the steel steps and right. break the cast. And then finally, after all this, and my daughter is borderline tears, and I'm like, what? When, when did this happen to wrestling? Then they take this cast arm, shove it between. A folded metal chair. And stop on the and chair. And then they stop on the fucking chair. What are you what are you getting at with this story? It's winded rap. What happened to something in between the eighties with elbow drops and clotheslines and the nineties? It went fucking batshit crazy. Mick Foley. That's what happened? That's what happened. Mick Foley fell from like sixty feet onto the concrete, and that's what everybody wanted in every match then after. I've never seen so, that. So there was there was a to- there was a time where every match devolved into chairs, ladders, baseball bats. <laughs> every match. It seems like there was like was there like a period of like two or three years. That's when I was watching murder wrestling. That's when I watched. Yeah, when like you remember what ECW was. Yeah. Extreme yeah. Championship Wrestling. All that was was like barbed wire matches. We don't need ropes. <laughs> we'll just use you know concertine wire. And that's what it's it was. Just fucking- Blood and fucking beating the shit out of each other i'm not gonna lie it was awesome yeah but i'm also gonna say like, like when, it was so different like after watching hulk and andre and then watching that it was like wrestling changed well you don't remember when we did our wrestling matches that's all they were because that's what was popular at the time well i remember we put on uh and, and for those that don't know we did organize a series of amateur wrestling events in our little town at the time and they were successful yeah. a lot of people came out but you're right. It was like people jumping off of, you know, Shit, le- you know, chairs, bats and all that. But I just thought that was because it was crazy. No, that, that's what wrestling was at the time. It was. And yeah. I missed that. And in a way, I kind of feel like I checked out of wrestling too early. I don't yeah. know when I should have punched out, but it definitely I should have stuck through 99 at least. When WCW ended, that was a good time to check out. Yeah, because it almost made me want to watch again. Like, that's the thing. When I was watching it last week and I was watching it, I said, no. maybe I need I've to be tr- watching. I've tried. I've tried to catch an episode recently. Is it not good anymore? It is, what, what is it? It is soap opera. It is catching up with the Kardashians. But they do end up beating each other at the end. I didn't even know because I was going to watch Raw on Monday night. And I was just going to watch it. Yeah. I didn't realize Raw now is every night. It's from 7 p.m. to 1030 p.m. Every night. It's a three and a half hour show. Uh, I'm pretty sure they have a Sunday episode on like MTV now or something. I don't know what channel they like. They have it on a really weird channel, but it's not even all matches, right? It's no, like it's soap opera and stories. And it's amazing. What Vince McMahon has done is amazing. Oh yeah. Amazing. He took a, what was nothing like back in the, I guess sixties and seventies. What was just that? It was there just was dudes a, in yeah. underwear, but there were thousands of them. Every little community had their own You're wrestling right. That's league. That's true. That's true. And like Tennessee was where it was really popular. Yeah, but every little town had their own little league. And the McMahon family came in and organized the entire country into one. Now, was he thing. the entrepreneur that started it all, or was he like I think the, his dad was. So he was like more like Donald Trump. Like his dad started a real estate company, but then the other guys, the son stepped in and took it to like eleven. Yeah. I think that's what happened. McMahon's father during the 60s was one of those Tennessee guys. Got, and just grew it a little yeah, bit, grew it a little got bit. Got it, got it, got it. And then when his son took over is when it turned into 
you know, this big reality show. Well, because I remember the Vince McMahon, I remember the 80s was a sideline announcer or like one of those guys that would interview like Mean Gene Okerlund right. or, or Gorilla. My favorite Gorilla Monsoon. I love fucking Gorilla Monsoon. <laughs> uh, but they would interview the dudes just in the little like hallways. Yeah. And Vince McMahon was one of those guys wear the cheesy tuxedo and talk and to the dude. he was like a normal sized person. I didn't. When did he fucking blow up? When did he become a giant man? Like ten years ago. Like that is a true ago. entrepreneur. That dude said, "I'm going to be a giant," and just became one. Do you no. think he did steroids? Yes, they all do steroids. Don't lie to yourself. Don't ever lie to yourself. Every one of those guys is on steroids. Yeah. Yes. All right. I mean, I mean, I know. Like they said, like why Macho Man Randy Savage was as great as he was was because he fueled himself in the 80s through cocaine and steroids. Yes. Like, cocaine and steroids made some of the greatest wrestling yeah. of all time. Well, because you you have to be big. You have to look the part. Is the, Steroids is, like, you don't have to be big what they to do what they do. But, like, you lo- have to look the part. Yeah. You have to look strong. Yeah. So, steroids. Then you're doing fucking four shows a week, traveling the country, and it is a physically tolling job. You know, you, you get beat the fuck up. So you, no, that's the other thing too. Like that's the, the thing. Like when I was watching this, yeah. Like there's no way in that Kane match and that Stone Cold match I was talking about. There's no way that didn't fucking hurt. Like well, everybody's like wrestling's fake, man. It's fucking fake. But like that, it's stunt work. It's it stunt man work, and you're fucking gonna get hurt. Yeah. Like didn't well, there is, I know what you were talking about the mankind thing? Didn't he almost die one time? He fell like three stories onto the concrete. <laughs> like it was a triple cage match. So. There was a normal cage around the <laughs> ring. Then there was a cage on top of it. Then there was another cage on top of that. And I think it was the Undertaker, like, choke slammed him or whatever. Through the top of the cage? He fell through all the cages <laughs> to, to the concrete below. 